the zero property. Today we're going to look at how we can help our students visualize the relationship between an integer and its additive inverse. We often start off with integers representing them with chips with our students. We'll say that one chip is a positive, so in this case I'm going to say my red is a positive, and the yellow is going to represent a negative integer. And we tell our students when we take these chips together and we push it over and lay them over each other, what happens? Poof, magically it disappears and it's gone. Sometimes this is a hard idea to, for our students to grapple with. Well, why does it disappear? What's actually going on? So I want to take you through a journey and I want to show or share a story that I heard from a mathematician called James Tanton. Now James Tanton says this story is made up, but it's a great way to be able to visualize what's actually happening and why we end up with the zero when we take a negative integer and we take its additive inverse, the positive integer, and they cancel each other out. So one day he went to the beach and he was playing with sand and he decided to make some pie. And each pile of sand that he made, he decided to call that a positive integer. Then as he was playing, he realized he could also dig some holes in the sand. And when he dug a hole in the sand, he decided to call each hole a negative integer. And as he played in the sand, he realized that he could take those piles of sand and move them over to create a level ground. So we take those piles of sand, shove them inside of the hole, and it became flat. This is a way, good way for our students to be able to visualize this idea of taking a positive, putting it with a negative, and having it equal zero. So I can take it and model this same idea. I have a pile of sand here, and I've got a hole here, and I'm going to push that pile of sand over, and I'm going to make it go into the hole. And once it's in that hole there, I can see that I have level ground, which is zero. Something that's really nice about this model is that I'm able to represent even that idea of having a vertical line to be able to represent my integers. I can see how each time I have a pile of sand, I can create it and make it go upwards. And every time I dig a hole, I can dig it deeper and deeper and deeper, showing that negative value of an integer. Well, what would this look like in a classroom when my students are using it trying to solve a problem? I'm not going to want them to draw piles and piles of sand and try to draw holes. Am I? I can simplify it away. So I can work with my students here to be able to show them how to represent it. So here's an example, a positive integer and I'm adding another positive integer. So I'm going to draw my piles of sand. I'm going to draw the first five piles of sand and then I'm adding on three more piles of sand. I can see that I've got in total eight piles of sand. And since they're piles of sand, I know that that represents a positive integer. So when I add positive 5 with negative, positive 5 with positive 3, I end up with positive 8. Now how does this logic work when I'm looking at a positive integer and then taking or adding a negative integer to it? So I'm going to start with my positive 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, and then I'm going to be adding in my negative integer, which means I'm adding in holes, and I'm adding three of them. I can visually see now that I can take a pile of sand and put it inside my hole. In this case, I have three piles of sand that will fit inside of three holes. And I know that when I cover them up, it gives me a level ground, which means it's got a value of zero. What I have left over are two piles of sand. And since they're piles of sand, I know that's going to represent a positive integer. Now I can take a positive integer 5 and add a negative integer 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And add that negative integer of 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I can still use the same line of thinking and I'm going to fill in my holes with all the piles of sand that I have. What I realize is that I have two left again, one, two, but this time they're holes and since they're holes they are going to represent my negative number. I can even start off with the negative number first. 
So if I start off with a negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and then I add a positive integer to it of 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. The idea, the concept remains the same. I'm going to take my piles and fill in those holes. That is going to level it out to give me a value of 0. What I have left over, 1, 2, are two piles. So this is going to represent a positive 2. What if I were to add two negative numbers together? Well, I'm going to start with my negative 3, 1, 2, 3, and I'm going to add my negative 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I can add them all together, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I end up with 8 holes, so I'm going to know that that will be a negative 8. Now when I go back to using the tiles or the chips or the counters with my students of two different colors, and I tell them that I can lay them over top for them to disappear, they have this understanding of why putting them together is going to give me a value of 0. I'm going to continue that logic as I work with the tiles and put them together. So every time I group a positive and a negative together, I'm going to get that value of zero. And that's the zero property. If I have three positives and three negatives, they're going to cancel each other out to give me that zero. What I have left over is going to be my answer. In our curriculum, we do have the cusp that shows model the sum of a positive and negative integer as a sum of zero and another integer. Well, how are we going to do that? Let's use this example here. I have my negative three, and I'm going to add four. I have worked with students before about decomposing numbers. I know that I can take a number, break it apart into different, into different pieces to make it work for me. So I'm going to take this four, and because I have a negative three here, I'm going to break it apart into three and one. Because I know that I can take those three holes and add three piles to it to get that value of zero. There is the negative positive integer adding with the sum of zero and what's left over. And another integer, my answer is going to be one. So now I can use that reasoning after using the visual to help me solve a problem. I hope that today, using the analogy of the sand, the piles of sand, and the hole in the sand, help your students be able to understand and draw on an experience that they've already had to understand that property of zero.